Welcome to our YouTube channel of Applied Forensic Research and Sciences. My name is Shubhanu Chakraborty, an intern under AFRS. Today's topic of presentation is chain of custody. In layman's term, chain of custody refers to the set of steps that any evidence gathered by the police must follow in order to maintain its validity. The burden of proof in court is on the prosecutor to present and demonstrate the proper chain of custody. Now, this means that the chain of custody is a set of chronological steps that needs to be followed for the basic gathering of evidence and followed by whom it should be followed by the police. in order for what in order to maintain its validity and why is that why should we follow chain of custody it is because the burden of proof in the court is on the prosecutor to present and demonstrate the proper chain of custody that means when the prosecutor is presenting something the chain of custody is put forward as evidence and the opposition party may ask that okay how can you prove that the chain of custody is valid or how can you prove that the evidence has not been tampered in that case is chain of custody will be very valid and very important moving on to the next slide we can see chain of custody in evidence handling and what kind of things or what kind of information does the chain of custody identify these are who took the evidence from the scene of crime who handled it who conducted the analysis and transfer of evidence where the evidence was kept now what are the common types of evidence is concerning chain of custody now one might wonder what are the things or what are the evidences that require the chain of custody to be followed these are blood dna samples documents photographs videos emails text messages etc these are all the types of evidences that we can possibly get from a crime scene which requires the chain of custody now what is a chain of custody form a chain of custody form is basically a document containing the description of items or articles that were seized the authorized movement of the evidence since the time it was seized inventoried and examined by the crime laboratory the name and signature of the person who temporarily held custody of the same the dates and times of such transfers of custody in the course of safekeeping and using the evidence in court as well as the final disposition now what does this typical complicated line mean it means that a document a, a chain of custody form is basically a document that contains a description of the evidence which is said in this form as items or articles that were seized i mean of course evidence should be seized from a crime scene so of course in order to maintain an authorized movement of collection of evidence we write every step as to how we are collecting the evidence in the chain of custody form which includes the name signature of the person who temporarily held custody of the same which is very very important because if there is no name and signature of the person in custody of the evidence then that chain of custody becomes very much invalid procedure of maintaining chain of custody now there are typical procedures of maintaining a chain of custody which are legalized by the court and one has to maintain those steps only to provide the chain of custody to the court otherwise the chain of custody will not be accepted now these procedures are gathering evidence which is the first step in the process to establish a chain of custody identification labeling recording and data collection are required from all pertinent sources for the data to remain authentic it must be stored secure now the basic things that we can gather from here are identification labeling recording and data collection these are the main points that we have to write first foremost now coming to examining the gathered evidence is the second step it is crucial to document all the techniques and steps used during the analysis of the evidence now while we are collecting the evidence it is very very important like it said in the ppt crucial to document all the techniques and steps that are used to collect the evidence third phase entails employing procedures and methodologies that can be justified by law to analyze the evidence and extract knowledge relevant to addressing the issues highlighted in a case now these includes the procedures or methodologies that is justified by law which the investigating officer is doing during the crime scene in the name of case now the highlight here will be the case 
and the procedures will be implied or written on the chain of custody now reporting all the data gathered through the examination and analysis of the evidence is the fourth phase a summary of the many tools employed in the process is included along with information on issues and weaknesses that have been identified and recommendations for any other extra measures to re-examine the evidence which means while we have completed all gathering of all the evidence we need to provide what are the tools and what are the name of the examinations that i have done for example if some if the investigating officer has done any kind of preliminary examination on the crimes and then he or she has to mention that on the chain of custody meanwhile if during the preliminary examination some weakness of the instrument or equipment has been notified this has to also be this also has to be mentioned on the chain of custody now uh, any recommendations regarding for example if a blood sample needs extra preliminary testing or the blood sample needs extra collection then that has to be mentioned in the chain of custody now moving on to the next slide we see the which are the cases in which the chain of custody must be upheld in it includes criminal prosecution civil court action checking for drugs and athletes mind it it's called doping clinical studies incidents of abuse violence history art collections mailing services checking to see if animals are raised in an ethical manners because note it there are different ways in which illegal animal breeding is done in order to um, increase marketing so in that case a chain of custody is also used confiscation of a forbidden substance like drugs or weed or something like that money jewelry or other valuables are seized by the income tax customs or revenue departments goods injured by firearms now what are the obligations of investigating officers while they write or maintain the chain of custody these are gathering evidence at the crime scene preserving the gathered evidence in sealed bags this is very very important because if the gathered evidence is not sealed properly then it is termed as tampered now examining the information gathered of course if i am collecting or the investigator officer is collecting any evidence he or she has to examine the information that he or she has gathered which is very important because otherwise how how will anyone be accountable for what the evidence he or she has collected now second topic is be accountable if the evidence is given to another expert for review or analysis if i am or in any investigating officer is collecting an evidence which does not include in his field of expertise he will definitely and must transfer the evidence to another expert for review or analysis and should write that in the chain of custody now the investigating officer who is transferring the evidence should take care of any evidence that transfers that occur now maintaining a record of each process used to handle the evidence if i am transferring something to uh, the another expert or another institution then i must i must maintain a record which is the chain of custody now what details must be documented to prove a chain of custody which is very important because in court people are asked or investigating officers forensic experts are asked how can you prove that the chain of custody is important what does your chain of custody has which that is why what details must be documented to prove a chain of custody now documenting specific information that supports the proof is essential this includes <coughs> excuse me this includes information about the gathering handling storage analysis and general handling of the evidence mind it the important terms are gathering handling storage analysis and general handling of the evidence if any crucial matter is left out the evidence will be invalidated which could have an impact on the case's outcome now these are the things that should be included in the chain of custody this is the order or these are the points that should be included in the chain of custody these are date time and reporting agency information 
the submitter's name, unique identification number, location of the lab where the test must be performed, obtaining authorization to examine the object, a description of each item submitted for inspection along with model, serial number and manufacturer, items distinctive markings, items condition, examiner's identity and signature, an overview of the procedures done during the examination, signatures of all the parties in the chain of custody together with the accurate date and time and any additional information about the time that is pertinent. So these are wholly the points that are required in the chain of custody. Now here I present you a sample very simple and a, sam a very uh, simplistic and very logical chain of custody form i can see here here is the logo of the institution you are gathering chain of custody the address of the institution agency name case number and what is the item number like hash one hash two the time removed reason for removal of evidence and signature of the collector i mean who is collecting the evidence now documentation requirements now what are the basic documentation requirements which i had explained earlier also but now this is very much a required topic so i'm giving it on another slide as well these are the details that need to be documented these are collection date collection period reporting agency's name submitter's name unique identification number or the case number location of the lab obtaining authorization investigation of a case a description of each item submitted distinctive marks state of the object mind it very important state of the object that I am getting I am sorry an overview of the actions done throughout the inspection looking through old files retrieving deleted data signatures of all the parties in the chain of custody with the appropriate date and time anything else that might be pertinent to the item now conclusion for those in charge of the evidence maintaining a correct chain of custody must be viewed as a professional and ethical obligation very few people in india have the practice of doing things the right way similar to this officers rarely maintain a proper chain of custody because they believe it to be of little significance little do they know however that the quality of the chain of custody they maintain determines whether or not any evidence is admissible in a court of law thus it is crucial to educate those in charge of handling such cases about how to establish a proper chain of custody. This will progressively contribute to assuring prompt justice for the populace, which means that the maintaining chain of custody is very much neglected and unprofessionally treated in India, but we as forensic experts should change it. We are budding forensic experts and we should realize how the chain of custody is important because yes, in court, the chain of custody is so very important and is at all not should be disregarded. Thank you everyone for listening to this topic. I hope you have learned something productive from this. If you have any doubts, kindly comment down below. Please like and share our video. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel to learn more about such interesting topics. Bye guys. Have a good day.